Hello world, I'm Brancliff. I'm over here with MapleStory 2, and I have been on this game for quite a while. It today is October 12th at the time I am recording this, meaning that I've been playing this game for 11 days, and I thought that I should give some kind of videos saying my thoughts on the entire thing, just overall. Now, I, I'm not gonna go all out like what I did with my Elsar video, because I think it's too early for that. And uh, the kinds of things that I may feel about this game may be influenced about the fact that I've been waiting for it for three years. So, uh, here, I'll, I'm just gonna, like, vomit out just my feelings about everything so far. And uh, it can be up to you to interpret them as you feel. And uh, if, if you're gonna be in for the long haul, I gotta say, I uh, might want to get your popcorn ready. But uh, this video might be kind of long because it's gonna be kind of unorganized and disjointed. But, hey... Uh, I, I think if you're, like, really thinking about playing this game, that, uh, you, you might find it beneficial. And, um, I, I, I guess we'll start off with, like, the good things, right? Um, this game, it, it seems like it may just be everything that it actually claimed to be. Like, uh, the housing system, it's great, you can build your own house, I'm in my own house right now. The music system, you can start a band with your friends, up to ten people performing at once. It's actually really interesting, because, um, there's a map right next to the main big city, and, uh, it's actually got this performer stage where, like, uh, you and the rest of your friends can, like, sign up to be the performers for a while, and, like, people do actually hang out there, so, yeah, I don't know, it could be, like, really good for the social help, and you can make some friends doing that, and it does give you experience for doing so as well, which is interesting, everything in this game gives you experience, fishing, farming, building your house, opening the treasure chest, experience is everywhere. It's like, what do you do to level up? Oh, everything. Well, I mean, okay, I say that, but really for the first 50 levels, it's really all in that story quest. A lot of people ask, like, oh, is it hard to level in this game? No, it's not. I hit level 50 on the first day. No, it may have been because I know life to bit, but I was not the only person who hit level 50 in the first day. And I, I'm sure that, like, if you really apply yourself and focus hard, you probably could too. Uh, the character progression in this game is pretty interesting because, um, I mean, maybe it's just one I'm not used to, but SP is limited to the point where, like, you can't get everything. In MapleStory 1, they always give you enough SP to max out every skill, but the problem with that, well, maybe you see it as a problem, I personally don't, but every person who played the same class basically played the same way. In this game, you gotta have builds, and, because you don't have enough SP to just level up everything. And uh, you can reset your skills for free whenever you want, and uh, you can have up to three skill trees, although you do have to pay for them, but I, I say the convenience is worth it. You can reset your skills for free, you can switch out on the fly, it's pretty neat. Although the character progression also has me worried, but we'll talk about that later. Now you might be wondering what I'm doing right now, I am working on my life skills. Yeah, things like communication, and building relationships, and oh, okay, bad joke, bad joke. Um, so basically how it works is like, th this is your stuff like your farming and your gathering and such. Um, now how it works is that there's a limit on how many times you can get each item per character per day. Like, I can get uh, 13 rices per day. And uh, that resets every day, but it's also on a per character basis, so if I wanted more rice, which I'm Asian, so I probably will, uh, I can just go grab another character and do that. There's a mini game that I, I'm not going to bother with because I am bad at them. And, uh, like, okay, I can get 13 rices per day, but I can get a certain amount of basically everything else if I want to. There's no, like, energy system where it's like, you have 500 energy points to spend on gathering things. That also means that you don't really need to think about what you want to gather for the day, because you may as well just grab everything. And I know you really may as well grab everything, because uh, it gives you experience for doing so as well. I'm going to use an item to buff up my gains for this. Uh, there are items that you can use that give you a buff to how many of the items you get per day, because it doubles how many of that item you get, while still only counting as one. So, like, if I used a buff to get more rice, I could get 26 rice instead of 13 rice. And I'm Asian, so I can go for all the rice I want. I, this, this is probably not the hard-hitting information that you really care to hear about in this video, but, you know, I figure I may as well talk about everything, since we're probably going to be here for a while. And, um, in regards to actually you watching this, I, I just gotta say thanks, because uh, I do not have the big MapleStory 2 viewership right now, so the videos I do put out 
they don't get very many views. And it is gonna be hard to break my way into the Maple Story 2 content creator scene because everyone else is making guides. I was able to corner the guide market on Elsword because no one else was willing to, but here everyone else is willing to, so like I, I've really got to compete with other people, and it's, it's going to be scary stuff for me. Uh, there are some things about this uh, experience with MapleStory 2 that apply to me that might not apply to everyone else because of who I am from the game that I previously played. Like, uh, I, I, I felt the need to buy a Founders Pack to reserve my name on multiple servers because I figured somebody would try to jack my name, uh, because they're like, uh, 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 it's funny. It's like how I've got, like, I've met four different Waffle impersonators in my comment section. It's like, that needs to stop. I'm gonna grab this piercing buff that I'm probably not going to use, because when I leave my house, I'm just going to be gathering more resources. Now, you might be wondering, is this all you do in the game? No, uh, you don't have to spend very much time with your life skills. Um, it's really not all that important at all, but I really like the daily system in this game. And yeah, Maple Story 2 is very daily centric. Like they they want you to log on and do certain things every day. Like there's dailies, uh, kill these two world bosses every day, which uh, I I one of them isn't done. One of them is. When does this world boss spawn in? Devil in Chief. Great. I'll, I'll, I'll just do what I'm done recording. They spawn in every hour, that's the point. Hey, what's this person playing? I have no idea, let's leave. Yeah, this game is very daily-centric, like... Here's this list of dailies that I gotta do. They're all really quick, and uh, if I do them, I get a box full of stuff, and it's great. And if I want to do more dailies, I can just move on over to another character and do those as well. There's also daily dungeon limits. Is there a stamina system in this game? Kind of. After 10 dungeons for the day, or 30 dungeons for the week, if you are done with either of those limits, you can keep running the dungeons, but you can't get any items. You can still get mesos, and you can still get experience. It's really the items that matter, and you're locked off from those as well. And that's one of the things that kind of scares me, because um, this is something that people are very upset about, but they haven't really addressed it. It was mentioned on a producer blog, but they mentioned it and then didn't say what their changes for it were going to be, because, you know, like, uh, the, the, the snobby big fat suits over at Nexon, or just with companies in general, they, they have a way of talking where um, they're intentionally vague about these kinds of things, like, here at Nexon, we value um, making use of multiple characters or something like that. Like, it doesn't really tell you anything, it's just kind of fluff. So, I don't know what the dungeon limits are going to be, but they're a thing for now, they're here to stay. If they're really that big of a problem for you, just make another character to bypass them, which you should really make another character anyway, because the more roles you can fit in a party, the more appealing you are in terms of being picked as a member of a party or a guild or a raid system. Which, we don't have the raids yet, because the progression, or the patch progression, so far is really interesting in this game. Like, th this first year with uh, Maple Story 2 in, um, in North America, it's kind of like the first year in... It's kind of hard to explain. Like, see, with Elsword, we're only like one patch behind Korea at any given time. But here in Maple Story 2, we're starting pretty early, and then we're gonna play super quick catch up over the next few months. And I'm not really sure how I feel about that because on one hand, it's like, yeah, okay, you you want people to settle into the game. And you, you don't want to give them too many things to do at once, or else they're going to feel overwhelmed. And that's perfectly fine. But for the real, like, big metagamer types, they gotta go hard on getting a new weapon, and then replace it with a newer weapon every two months. And, you know, like, if they want to do that, good for them. I, I know some people are starved for content, and they're always just asking, when's the next dungeon? When's the next dungeon? When's the next dungeon? When's the next dungeon? But... I, I was never about that. I just want to get the nicest weapon I can get my hands on, and then just be done with it. But that, that, that's not what they want to do. I mean, maybe when we're done playing catch-up, maybe that's what we'll be able to do, but I, I don't know. Also, I gotta say, uh, if you were a Maple Story 1 player, the musical cues in this game, you will appreciate them. That's not to say that there aren't their own like original tracks, because, you know, there are. 
but uh, there, there's tons of recognizable music, and it's is wonderful. Do I not have the foraging thing? Where are my chips? I do not have any chips right now. Well, okay, let's let's fix that. Let's go over into the crafting window. Now, the weird thing is that the crafting window has a limit of crafting 1,000 items per day. I don't know how you would ever hit that many items per day, unless you, like, do all of your gathering and no crafting for, like, a week. And then you're like, oh, well, now would be a good time to do my crafting. Uh, is it handicrafts? No, it's... it's... it's cooking. Of course, it's the last one I check. Can't be easy with you, game, can you? Uh, let's see, what, what is it again? But Can I make banana chips? Yes, I can. <laughs> banana chips, that is freaking weird. I gotta say about the food system in this game, whose idea was it to make banana sandwiches? That is terrible. And that's coming from someone who likes pineapple pizza. Yeah, I, I said it, and, and you know what? I, all Asians like pineapple pizza. I, I, I don't mean all Asians as in, like, every single human being alive that is Asian. I know someone's gonna be a smart person in the comment section and be like, Oh, well, I'm an Asian and I don't like it. I'm such a contrary. But no, no okay, Mo most Asians like it. Wow, this video, yeah, this is gonna be a really long video, holy shit. Uh, at least you can really see, like, my daily routine for the kinds of things I do on this, which, man, if you think this is weird, uh, I do this multiple times a day per character. I have a level 60 priest, a level 55 archer, and a level 25 heavy. Uh, my, my priorities list is going to be priest, soulbinder, archer, heavy wizard, soulbinders are going to be in here, at least for a while, because according to the producer blog, they think that soul binders fit Christmas. I, I, I don't know either. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe later on in this video we'll be able to try out a dungeon. I, I, I guess it kind of depends on the kinds of things that I see on world chat. Maybe if someone's going to be one of those people that's like, oh, I need a priest really badly, then maybe I'll like, be nice and help them. Which I gotta say, the priest scene in this game is all kinds of fucked up. <laughs> like, priest is actually the most popular class in the game. At least if the official Maple Story 2 Discord is anywhere to go on. There are more people with the priest rule on that server than any other class rule. Despite that, it is very hard to find priests. Why is that, you might be wondering? Well, it turns out, for some reason, scepters cost more than the other weapons. Now, they still don't cost as much as thrown weapons. Uh, but, you know, f forget luck classes, who needs them anyway? I, um, what? I finished my... One sec, did I finish my... Four, ugh, ranching. Yes, I did, okay, good. Another interesting thing is that the life skills window tells you how close you are to, um, getting your next level, and it tells you, uh, where your success rates are for everything. Tomorrow, I will unlock the bullpen, and I will also unlock farming medicinal mushrooms. Oh, I unlocked them today, I guess I'll do that. By the way... You place these things in your house. You you can just like start your own farm at home. Although you cannot place foraging points or mining points at home, you can place farming points and ranching points at home. I, I don't know why they felt the need to differentiate that, but they did. There's this really interesting event going on right now, which I, I, I guess I'll be able to do. Um, how many coins do I have? 33. Uh, yeah, sure. It, I, I, I think while I'm doing this, I'm going to talk about the technical aspect of this game, because oh boy, do I have a lot to say about it. The technical aspect of Maple Story 2 has actually been all kinds of wrong lately. Oh, it's this. Let's see, I've got a fortune cookie with your name on it. It's all of these filled with goodies for you. Go ahead and enjoy it. I'll see you back in Queenstown. Maple fortune cookie. Let's see what's in it. Uh, I got... Uh... Uh, oh, I got hurt by words. Okay. Those unfortunately do not do anything. So, here, here's, here, this is hilarious, right? So here's Mapleopoly. Uh, th there was something real wrong with this game, and they goofed it up. Each roll cost three Maple Coins, but it turns out that they would also give you Maple Coins as you progress through the board. But the problem is they would give you more Maple Coins than it took to actually progress meaning that people were able to farm, like, disgustingly large amounts of coins. I wasn't able to take the most advantage of this, but I had pretty good luck with my rolls anyway, so now I'm done, and I got to get a uh, suit that I'm not really sure I wanted in the first place. I mostly got it just because I could, could because really I I'm not a big fan of how it looks. Also, unlike Elsword, 
Ice rolls don't cost you real life money! So instead, I'm spending most of my rolls on this coin, or on this coin, on this wheel. Also, I don't know why this game likes bunnies so much. I mean, technically, Maple Story 1 had a bunny thing going on too at the beginning. I'm just gonna skip it. Let's see, fireworks, earrings, mini lights, your instrument box, yes! Alright, let's keep going. Now you can roll one to ten or a hundred times in a row, but the problem is, if you, you want to roll like 20 or 50 times, you just gotta roll ten times multiple times. I mean, it's not that bad, it's just a little bit inconvenient. I wish you could like, type it- YO! I got the leaf! Uh, the, the Wii, it, I mean, it's not that great. I, I just, I, I'm just glad I have it. I, it's got that, like, sense of completion. Um, does it have the same stats as the Flying Mush Band? Uh, it's, it's only slightly slower. Well, alright, that's cool. Uh, I, I'm gonna slide that in my bank. By the way, premium club membership in this game lets you have a portable bank. It's great. Back it out now. On the topic of the technical aspect of this thing, though, um... It's, it's been kind of shaky, because there have been a lot of, like, connection issues for people, uh, some of which is connected to Nexon Launcher being the Nexon Launcher, because even though Nexon is an industry giant, they're still terrible when it comes to account issues, uh, website problems, forum problems, and launcher problems. Why do launchers even exist in the first place? Why can't it just be double-click the Maple Story 2 icon to open the fucking game? Uh, I, I know, I know, it's because it forces you to look at advertisements for the other games that you could also be playing, but still, this inconvenience is dumb. Oh wait, I need more banana chips. Gotta make those banana chips, right? Yeah, the, the, the cooking system in this is a little bit weird. Oh boy, let's keep going. Uh, so yeah, uh, the technical aspects have been really bad lately, but to go into that further, there have been a lot of times people just can't, like, straight up can't get into the game whenever they want. Um, some people, they don't have the choice to play the game. Uh, the game decides when they're allowed to play, basically. Uh, some technical aspects are, like, really finicky for people in that some people with really good connections and are usually spared from the smiting of Nexon Launcher. Uh, sometimes they just have bad days anyway, like I've got a guildy who's- the game's been perfectly fine for him, and then one day it just gave him repeated crashes for an hour straight, and then it just went away! So, uh, in other words, uh, Maple Story 2's tech problems, uh, they're like a god. They, they work in strange ways. Except that these technical problems are real and they do exist. Okay, that's a bad joke, I shouldn't go there. I will say, uh, if you don't like Nexon Launcher, which you don't, uh, you can always just play the game through Steam instead. And it's really interesting that I mentioned that, because Maple Story 2, at the time that I am recording this video, is on the top 10 of the Steam Play stats, which is absolutely legendary. The only thing else I have to say about the Steam Play stats is why the fuck is PUBG still there? <laughs> I mean, maybe it's because I haven't touched any of these Battle Royales apart from Mushroom Royale, but I, I, I don't know how it's even competing. I mean, isn't that game the joke of the genre for a reason? I mean, it's expensive, it has aimbot problems, it has Chinese and Mexinet problems, and it's gotta compete with the game that is free, trendy, popular with the kids, and memed to death. How am I still not done with my fortune here? Jeez, I'm gonna need another set of banana chips after that. Oh well, may as well do some crafting instead. Like I said, this is not all you do in this game. I just feel like putting a lot of time into my farming anyway because you get trophies from it and because I want to level up my life skills as far as I can, of which there are 13 levels for the crafting and I believe also the gathering. Yes, now the leisure skills, oh, oh man, anything goes during this, but I gotta say, uh, the leisure skills level set gets you a mannequin. I'm gonna get some Starline nine nine droids and then what whatever those are. Oh, more water blocks. Yeah, water blocks cost money in this game. But uh, the furniture in this game is very cheap. It, it just plans to nickel and dime you, like elsewhere. It's right now it is four uh four yeah four merits per water block, which is just four cents. So like the only time you would ever need to spend more than like two dollars on water is uh, if you want to make like a wave pool or something. Like I've got a guildy who just straight up made a beach and it, it, it was incredible. We, we've got like our own little guild beach resort. I love it. Let's keep going. 
Uh, now, a pro tip for all y'all who are trying to get into, you know, this life skill stuff, right? Uh, actually, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna cut this off right here. I gotta hit- I, you gotta hit escape to stop crafting. It's, it, it's a bit weird. Um, life skill stuff, right? Uh, the, these tier 1 things, like the copper ingot, they only give you one mastery. That means that if even if I were to use a buff item that increases mastery gain, I would still only get one mastery from it, regardless unless I were to buff up my mastery gain by 100%. Because of that, you could either save your copper ingots until a very long time in the future, or you could just like craft the whenever you're not doing anything, like when you're in a mini game and you're just waiting. But I am going to craft some things now. Thankfully, the crafting system in this game isn't anything too complex. It's not like RGH. I, I, I don't need to go, like, call a crafting guild and, like, get workload potions and then, like, travel across the sea with the trade pack. It's, it's none of that. Which, yeah, RGH was popular in my household, so uh, I, I got to hear all of the times Tryon messed up. And uh, now someone's gonna comment in the comment section like, Oh, actually, Brandcliffe, it's pronounced Arshiage. Y you know what? You know what my perspective on these things is? If it's an RPG, uh, someone will automatically think you're pronouncing it incorrectly regardless. I mean, am I supposed to say Chrono Trigger? Am I supposed to say Chrono Trigger? You know he doesn't spell his name with an H? Jeez. Oh, <laughs> my god, what is this video? Oof. On the technical aspect, though, uh, the tech problems have been very nice to me, as in, I've pretty much had almost no tech issues whatsoever, except there was this one time I was in a hard dungeon with the guild, we were trying to fight not Magnus, and then suddenly the server pooped out and almost all of us crashed. It was a weird time, I logged in right away and the first thing I see on world chat is, hey, did everybody else crash too? Which, yes, we did. But the interesting thing is that, in this game, if you get a disconnect, it doesn't force crash the game, it just brings you back to the server select. Which is what these games should be doing in the first place. Although MapleStory 1 was also bad about that, but MapleStory 1 is also, like, from 2003. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um... Crap, what was I going to talk about? There was something I was going to say about that. Oh yeah, server issues. Uh, okay, so there are five servers. There is US West, US East, uh, Europe, South America, and o Oce Oceania? I don't really know how you're supposed to say that. Uh, if I have any Australian or New Zealand viewers, uh, how do you pronounce Oceania? And why are we supposed to say that? Because when I was a kid, you just say Australia to refer to that place. Even though New Zealand is New Zealand and not Australia, it was in the continent of Australia, so if you needed to refer to both of them at the same time, you would just say Australia. Oh jeez, and about server uh, things. So there's five servers. Uh, all of your accounts are pretty much separate throughout all of the servers. So like, you could play on US West and US East if you wanted to, and there'd be nothing stopping you from doing so. Uh, because your accounts are still technically separate though, it's not like your bank is interdimensional or anything, and there's that. But uh, anytime they're mailing out something that goes out to your account, usually they'll mail it out on all five servers. So like, um, when I bought a Founders Pack, right, I was able to claim my Founders Pack stuff on all five servers. Am I ever going to play a different server? Probably not. But you may as well claim them, because hey, taking free stuff is better than not taking free stuff, and it'll only take a few minutes anyway. Although there is one problem with that going on right now, and that is that uh, for some reason, uh, the, the server select is broken. Uh, like, they used to have a server change button, and then you'd click it, and, 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 and then the game would restart. <laughs> and so, uh, they haven't fixed it yet, so instead they just took out the server select button for now, because even though that doesn't do anything to fix the problem and I still have to restart the game to change servers, it's at least a little less confusing. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else should I talk about? Um, character progression, right? So character progression in this game... I am deathly afraid of how the character progression system in this game is going to be. Like, this might just be the make or break for me. Uh, I, I had, like, a really bad reality check last night when I was recording, um, not when I was recording, when I was just playing the game on my own. It was like, uh, like, I got all of my new equipment. It was great. The drop rates on them were disgustingly low, but I got them great stuff, right? So now we push the hard dungeons instead because my gear score is high enough to get into them. 
uh, when they call it a hard dungeon, they weren't kidding. It, it, it was, in fact, really hard. And, uh, see, that's one thing that kind of scares me about this kind of stuff, because, you know, people, generally speaking, they want to feel challenged so that they, you know, like, they want to have a really intense fight so that they can feel proud of it when they win. I do not feel proud of it when I win. When I am in these hard dungeons, I just feel helpless start to finish, and uh, I usually end up taking a lot of L's, and uh, sometimes I even get a game over by the time it's over, because uh, in the hard dungeons, you, you do actually have a set number of lives, and once they're out, you're out. And that feels really bad, because if you run out of lives, you feel like you're really bringing the team down. And, you know, as the priest, I'm the last person that's supposed to be bringing the team down. But what scares me is the way they've been doing this equipment progression system. Now, in the normal dungeons, they're not, they're, they're not too hard to get into. Pretty much anyone can do them, right? They have disgustingly low drop rates, but the items are at least tradable. So if you get an item, you can equip it. If you don't want to equip it, you can give it out to someone or sell it. That's perfectly fine. The hard dungeons are the opposite. They have really good drop rates, but they're untradable and character bound, except for the weapons and the accessories, but, but the armor's a character bound. And, like, well, okay, actually, you know what, I, I, I think I goofed up there when I said that. I'm sure one of those things wasn't actually true. I know that the weapons can be banked here to your alms. That, that's what I'm trying to say here, but, um, see, then it becomes a problem. Like, which one did I like it being? Would I rather there be disgusting with all drop rates, but I can actually trade them? Or would I rather it be guaranteed, but I can't trade them? Meaning that I gotta keep running the dungeon over and over again on my alt if I want them to get the armor. Basically making myself do the same thing twice. And if I do get something really good, but it's on the wrong character, it's worthless. Oh, whoops, whoa, whoa, whoa. abort that. I, I, was, I was not crafting that with the buff. Whoops. Ah, uh, jeez. Biding my intention. I'm, I'm not Let's Play, but uh, the Let's Play curse, I'm just gonna blame it on that. Which, interestingly enough, like, I thought about doing a Let's Play of the story quest in this game. But I decided not to, because the story is really long and probably not all that interesting. There, there is, like, 51 levels worth of story, but it is really long. And, you know, you would think a game with the word story in its title would be really good about its writing, but, uh, mm, mm. Like, see, I think my overall biggest problem with Maple Story 2 is writing, uh, is that it takes too long to be interesting. Like, in Maple Story 1, let's say I wanted to do the LNL Fairy Academy, right? It's interesting start to finish, and it only takes like two, um, two or three hours to finish. The Maple Story 2 story can take forever, and it'll feel like it's not going anywhere. And in regards to the story, actually, it has plot holes. Originally, the plan was like Maple Story 2 would be the prequel to Maple Story 1, because because the ending to Maple Story 1 is. But, but then, the problem is, they goofed too many details, and now they've got spaghetti writing, and they didn't know what they were supposed to do when they realized that they goofed up. It was either they retcon it and say, ha ha ha, just kidding, that wasn't what happened, or uh, they do what they instead chose to do, which is, uh, uh, sorry we goofed, uh, okay, then now what? Uh, tell them to say it's an alternate universe. So, this game is non-canon? Which means they can do whatever they want, but now it also means that if you're here for Maple Story One's story information, uh, you're not getting it, and that kind of sucks because it was setting itself up for some interesting things. Like when I made my heavy, right? Uh, the heavy lives in Edelstein. He's got a secret underground laboratory where he does all of his research. He's got this really interesting thing going on called the Fusion Core, which he could use to power the entirety of Edelstein, which, uh, as some of you may know, is kind of having an energy crisis. Then the Resistance storms it, and they try to steal it from him, which is kind of scary because it's like, so is the Heavy the bad guy, or is the Resistance the bad guys? And why is the Resistance here to begin with? I thought that wasn't even formed yet. It's also really jarring to see everybody's different designs. I mean, it makes sense, because like, if this game were the prequel, people would look different, because a lot of time hasn't passed, but man, some people look really jarring. Like, I made my Berserker, and oh, oh, oh man, Lillin, Lillin is fine AF. Now, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I, I, I just said that. You know what, it's it's true, I'm sorry, I, I know it's weird to hear someone say that, but it's true. Which, yeah, this is another thing, oh, okay, oh man, I, I can't believe I'm about to say this. Maple story thoughts. 
<laughs> now, in Maple Story 1, if you saw, like, some, like, luminous girl with, like, rainbow hair, 50 different glowy effects on, and she wasn't wearing any pants or shoes, you knew, fuck. And she probably sat in Hennessy's all day. Now, because Maple Story 2 lets you design your clothes, it's, it's really interesting. There's a lot of interesting things you can do with that. But you don't know the internet if you don't think that that is not going to be abused. It has been abused to hell and back. There have been people making, like, oh, man, some people are so trashy. And, and like, you know, there's going to be people who be like, oh, well, now's the time to make meme hell. I'm going to make a Vidi Vine Sauce t-shirt. And, you know, okay, I, I don't mind too much meme hell if it has its place and you don't see it everywhere. But, and, no, you really don't see it everywhere. There, there's an interesting mix of things because, like, there's original stuff. There's stuff that actually looks pretty good, there's the beam dumps, there's the waifu garbage, but, like, it's not so overbearing to the point where you see too much of one thing. I mean, ideally there'd be no waifu garbage at all in, in my ideal world, but that, that's, that's not how this works, and it wouldn't be the internet if that were the case. But, you know, you, you see a lot of different unique designs. Like, over here, I, I guess I'll show my character. So this is what I'm wearing usually. I wanted to find the thing that, like, fit me the most, I guess. So I got the clothes that, like, looks the most like me. We also have guild uniforms in my guild. And the idea was that, like, we would all wear the uniform whenever we're doing, like, anything with intense amounts of cooperation. And it would be a really good way to make people more likely to recognize us. And plus, it's really cool seeing a lot of people all wearing the same thing. So, yeah, now you might be wondering, wow, Grand Cliff, I, I sure recognize that, and yeah, yeah, you do. But, I am really proud of what we got going on, I think it turned out real well, and uh, ma major props to my girl Violet for making that. Uh, y you know, usually when I refer to one of my, uh, like, one of my friends or guildies or something, I say my boy X, but I can't really say my boy X when that, that is not a boy, because that is a girl. Are, am I assuming her gender triggered? Uh, so, okay, speaking of being politically un uncorrect words, speaking of being politically incorrect, this game's chat builder is off the walls. Now, I, I know that it's still in the works, because I have seen some of the ways it's changed, but I'm not about to say the word class, because it has the word ass. Which means that I am not going to be able to compliment any nice assassin girls I see that look fine AO. I'm, I'm joking, by the way. Assassin maids are filth. But, I can't say class, but it used to be that I wasn't allowed to say peanut butter, uh, but they fixed that. So I am now allowed to say peanut butter, which is great. Uh, except that peanut butter isn't really all that good anyway, but still. I, I, I know someone in the comment section is going to be like, Oh, Brian, you gotta try my Nutella sandwiches, or... Oh, wait, wait, crafting the wrong thing, crafting the wrong thing. I, okay, it's not that hard to mess up crafting things. It's just I'm really dividing my attention across a lot of things. Now, as far as classes go... Well, like I said, I've got a priest, an archer, and a heavy. Job advancements are not in the game yet, and I don't know when they're going to be. There's no babble for this game yet, so really, uh, all we know is whatever next one feels like telling us. There's there's no, like, centralized resource for this game, which is something I miss. Like, in Elsewhere, we got Elwiki. If you had a question, you, you go to Elwiki. We don't have our hidden street yet, and uh, that's a little unfortunate, but... I, uh, people are kind of in the works of fixing that, like Zidiko, uh, Zidiko, uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name, friend. The guy who has the Megumi username, uh, maplestoryguide.com, uh, he might be posting it every single day on the Reddit, but you know what, it's a good website, so I'll, I'll, I'll give him a pass for the blatant self-promotion. But we don't really have, like, a data mining resource or, like, a really good translation resource. Which, I mean, technically, do we even need translations anyway, considering that uh, a lot of the things that are coming to us in future patches have been in MapleStory 2 Korea for a few years now? And, you know, I say MapleStory 2 Korea, but the funny thing about that, uh, China has its own MapleStory 2 server as well, and I just gotta say, how did China get this game before we did? It, I mean, it's just China. Nexon of America is also in control of Maple Story 2 for the United States, or the United States, North America, South America, Europe, and o Oce Oceania. 
But no, no, prioritize China first. I mean, I'm sure they need it more than us. Uh, they could go over to the noxious grotto and they could be reminded of how bad their air quality is, both in their own country and in game. I, I'm related to this game in some weird regards. Like, this game has a profile picture system. Like, uh, here's my profile picture right here. It's my portrait, profile picture, whatever. And, um, I realized something. This game reminds me of how bad I am at taking selfies in real life. <laughs> and you can set your profile picture to be whatever you want, really. I, I mean, don't be too weird with it. They do actually ban people for these things. But, um,. Yeah, it's really fun. It's just hard to take selfies in this game. And that's also partially because of the lack of camera control. You can't change the camera angle in this game at all. Now, if you zoom in, you can make it look kind of a little more, uh, like, flat, I guess. Like, I can do this, and then I can do this, uh, but that's about it. Now, if, 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 in my home, I can also make it be completely top-down. Uh, I don't know why anybody would ever want to do that, or completely, uh, completely 2D if I wanted to, like at the Mushmom spawn point. And yes, Mushmom is in this game. Uh, in case you're you're a horrible person and you feel like thinking, hmm, uh, you know what my house needs? A jump quest. <laughs> oh, I was about to talk about classes. Um, in regards to classes, I gotta say, priest. I do like priest. Uh, Usually, leveling up a healer is agony in MMORPGs, but no, leveling up a priest in this game is perfectly fine, you can do it on your own, I did it, in fact, it was the first thing I did, because, you know, I'm gonna make this class, so, duh, but, um, I, I will say, uh, it, that, so that's not to say it wasn't without a hitch, priest does actually have pretty good mobbing, but holy blast knocks enemies away from you, so sometimes you gotta, like, go chase after them, and that's annoying. And, uh, being able to heal myself whenever I wanted sure was convenient. In fact, it was too convenient. And now whenever I'm playing on a class that's not my priest, it's like, you mean I gotta use items now? And it's hard, man. I, I, I gotta get adjusted to that, because the healing items in this game are really weird. So you've got two types of healing items, herbs and potions. Herbs, like, you use them and they give you a 30 second regen buff. Uh, so you get your health back slowly, which is really handy, but unlike in Mushkin Royale, it is not disabled when you take a hit, so that's nice. Which also pretty much means there's no reason not to have it on. And then there's the potions. Now, you can't spam potions, but you also gotta use them pretty often. Potions have a cooldown of 5 seconds, and that means that you gotta remember that they exist, but you can't just mash the, po the chug button. And that's really interesting, because, like... It's just weird to get used to. It's a weird equilibrium that's hard for me to adjust to. And uh, I, I think potions are meant to be more of a failsafe anyway, because uh, usually the damage in this game comes in two forms, tickles and one-shots. Usually the one-shots are really telegraphed. Like, uh, since this game uses a tile-based system, uh, they, they make it really obvious, like, hey, this tile was red, maybe you don't want to stand on it. So if you like Simon Says, you sure will like the hard dungeons in this game. The only problem is, uh, some attacks are telegraphed not as clearly, or, you know, if your computer is bad, your frame rate will be high enough to understand the ways that the attacks are telegraphed to begin with. Oh, boy, and sometimes you don't really know the level of threat that each telegraphed attack has. Like, uh, some attacks that are telegraphed, they, they'll one-shot you, which, you know, duh. But some attacks that are telegraphed aren't really all that dangerous. Like, uh, in the Forgotten Veyer dungeon, there, there are these red tiles, and if you step on the red tiles, you take damage, but you don't take all that much damage. Like, it's kind of bad, but it's not really that bad. I guess it's like a third of your health on most characters, and it actually gives you a buff that increases your attack power. So, like, arguably, you might want to step on that tile, but when you see a tile glowing red, that can mean all kinds of things. You don't really know unless you're the guinea pig or you look it up. Which is to say that a lot of the dungeons in this game do have a lot of, like, research that needs to go into them. Maybe I'll need to make dungeon guides at that point. It's like, oh man, um, you, you gotta, like, really learn boss attacks in this game, and, and you gotta, like, actually be good at dodging things with your evasive maneuvers. Which is hard for me, because I'm a priest, and Holy Wings is ass. Now, I think everybody who's played priest can agree with me on that one. Holy Wings is straight guard. You know what? If you play Overwatch, and you play Mercy, and you pick up Maple Story 2, and you made priest, you will still think Holy Wings is ass.
Holy Wings lets you glide to a nearby party member, healing both of you and buffing both of your movement speeds. The only problem is that it's a dash. See, if you try evading an attack using the dash, and someone is too close to you, you quote dash unquote into them, which means you really only move like one tile because you'll stop at their position, and, and that means you didn't end up dashing at all, which means you still end up taking a hit. And sure, you might think it's kind of nice because, hey, that dash also heals both of you. But if that was an attack that one shots, that heal doesn't really matter anyway. There's an interesting equilibrium here because in terms of knights and priests, like the two main support classes, you kind of need both of them. Because, you know, you want a priest so you can heal up the damage you take. Duh. You can't heal up the damage you take if you weren't able to survive it in the first place, and that's where the knight comes in. Those defensive buffs are really nice when they feel like working, but they don't always feel like working, and uh, it, it's kind of like a roller coaster. It looks really dangerous, but you gotta trust it anyway. Like, if I, I see a boss is going to do a really slow, really obviously hard-hitting telegraph attack, uh, but I see a knight holding a shield out, I know that it's better for me to get behind the knight than it is to try to dodge the attack. <laughs> and that, is, that is weird, man. But, like, I mean, I don't hate it. It's, it's just gonna take some getting used to. I hope that uh, a lot of my viewer base is going to get used to the idea of Maple Story 2 videos, because it's gonna be, like, the main channel feature now instead of Elsword. And, um, like, I do have a lot of viewers on Brand Clip Siege posting who are like, hey, Brand, I want to try out Maple Story 2. What do you think? And, you know what? It's great. But, uh, I. I don't know if there's really anything I could do to get more of my viewer base into Maple Story 2. I just gotta, like, pump out all these videos and just hope maybe they'll give it a try eventually. I mean, unless any of you guys have any ideas. And hey, if you're watching this video, you clearly thought about Maple Story enough to the point where you decided to click on this video just by how long it is. So that's gotta be worth something, right? I don't know. Uh, oh, oh, wrong item, wrong item, wrong item. God damn, I am so bad at this. Um, but yeah, y'all gotta work with me on this one. And, uh... If so, may maybe this channel will flourish. Oh, and by the way, life skill items are all bound to your character, which means that, um... Which means that every character is like their own instance of life skills. Like, you can't farm a lot of apples on one character, and then move them all to your main. Now, I actually kind of like this, because they're called life skills, meaning that they should be skills that are individually worked to each separate person. Which would include your characters, so, you know, they, they all live different lives, obviously. Uh, plus, if you were able to set all of your materials to one character, that would make it really easy to just, like, supercharge your levels a ton. Oh, jeez. Uh, I don't know if there's really anything else I want to talk about. Uh, I'm just gonna look at all of these just to make sure. Oh, yeah, uh, one thing I want to talk about, the black market in this game. Uh, that, that's how we say board over here in uh, Maple World. Uh, so the, the way trading works in this game is really strange, at least when it involves you having equipment that you can actually trade to begin with, which is not always. So how it works is that um, when you put up an item, there's a fee, obviously, but the fee scales with how much the item costs. It is actually 2% of the item's price. Now, if the item sells, uh, you get the feedback. If the item doesn't sell, you still get the feedback. So, what's the point? If you grab, um, so items you put on the board, you put them up, and they stay there for two days. If you want to take the item off the board, you don't get the feedback, which means you lost your money. The problem with that is that if you put something up on the board and someone undercuts you by one meso. Uh, well, your items are still on the board for two more days, what are you gonna do? Suck it up. And that means that an undercut in this game is even more annoying than it is in other games. Now, some people might say that this is a good thing because it means you don't have undercut wars with other people where you just keep taking your items off the board and then selling them for one base or less than the other person just, just because, like, you really want it to sell more than them. But I actually kind of like that system, because at least then, it rewarded players who were more active about trying to put their items up on the board. If you put up an item on the board and someone else undercuts you, then you, all you can really do is wait for the item to come back to you two days later. A 48 hour cycle, so I am not a fan of that. Now I haven't had to use the board very much anyway, 
but I know that eventually it's gonna be something I'm gonna need to get into. Now, the reason I haven't needed to use the board very much anyway is because of those daily missions that I talked about earlier. You get three missions in the Get Rich tab, and if you get these, and you clear all of them, and they're very fast, you can do them very easily, uh, you will get roughly, um... 250,000 mesos per character. Of course, it fluctuates. Uh, the most I've gotten is 350,000. The least I've gotten is uh, like 230,000, so something like that. I, you are guaranteed to get at least 220,000 for sure. Anyways, uh, because of that, like you can slowly build up your mesos if you want to. And I like this system because it lets you work hard on making money like without having to really dig up like, how do I make money for them, guys, or anything. Like, you don't have to be smart to do it, you just have to apply yourself to make a little bit of money. And I think that's a good thing. Like, I think that if you want to get super duper rich, then yeah, a little bit of cutting should be required. But if you just want to make enough money to get by, I don't think you should need to be like a wizard. You shouldn't need to be like, you shouldn't need to have the intelligence of a supercomputer to do that. Oh boy, okay, so I don't know how long have I been recording this. I've been recording this for almost 45 minutes, good lord. Yay, rendering this is gonna suck. But, uh... I, I think that's mostly it, in terms of things I wanted to talk about. And oh, one more thing, um, before I cut this video, since you are were willing to watch this video, uh, your opinion on this matters more than anyone else. So, I usually upload elsewhere videos at 12 o'clock. When well, do you think I should upload Maple Story 2 videos? Because I could also upload them at 12 o'clock and just be like, well, you know, that's when people probably come home, sure. But I was also thinking maybe I should upload them at like 4.30pm, because the daily reset is midnight in Korean time, and because of that, it is at 5pm Pacific Standard Time. And, um, I don't know, maybe if I upload them right before reset, it could be a good reminder, like, hey, reset it is in 30 minutes if you see this video, so just to let you know. I don't know, leave a comment down below. But, uh, yeah, th this crafting stuff, I know I just crafted for like 15 minutes straight, and that was probably the least interesting uh, B-roll you could have ever seen me do, but I'm gonna cut the video here because I've gotta go fight that world boss, and uh, if you think I can record that world boss fight, you have not been in enough of those. The frame rate in those is like a PowerPoint presentation. If you have any comments about Maple Story 2, leave them down below. I'm Rancliffe. Goodbye, everyone.